So what does the inference question look like? It looks like which of the following can be inferred or the author implies or the author suggests or which of the following does the passage imply? Now, so far we have seen the factual question and the vocabulary question. Well, factual and not the factual. And remember that the principle in the factual question was that the answer is always in the text. So we had to go to the text to see whether it says the information the alternatives are providing and if the text is not providing the information that the alternatives are providing then that's not our answer now the inference question is different here we don't treat this as a factual question which means we don't expect the answer to be in the text we don't expect the text to tell us exactly the information that the alternative is providing so what do we do then what we do we do, well, the first step is always the same step. We read the question first to identify the question type. And now that we identify that it's an inference question, we still find the specific keywords. Okay, we go to the text and we scan the text and read what it says about the specific keywords. And then we try to predict here, there's a difference. First, we're going to try to predict. We're going to try to draw an inference. We're going to try to predict the inference from the information in the text. And that's how different it is. Now, when we predict, what we do is we try to infer information. Okay, now when we infer means we're creating new information from previous information that we have. Now, how is this different from just reading the information? Because the factual question is just having the same information, the same basic information, important information. Here we're going to create new information. So I have a question for you. Do you know what an inference is? Can you tell me or can you think right now what it's an inference? Because we're dealing with inference question, right? So who can tell me what an infer inference is? Again, you cannot tell me, but you can tell yourself. You can try to think what is to infer. What is it to create an inference? Okay, you may come up with words like conclusion, you know, with reasoning, right? Or with deduction, maybe. Yes, there are all possible ways to interpret or to define the word inference. Yes, we are concluding something, we are creating a process of reasoning until we reach a conclusion or we deduce information from the information given. Now, a typical inference will be something like this, right? So a typical inference in the real world will be something like, um, I am a human, right? and humans have brains, right? And the inference will be, the conclusion will be, I have a brain, right? Now, if you notice, and those of you who may remember this from school, from college, you remember that this is actually a, like a typical inference to make. So you have the first, I am a human. We have the second piece of information, humans have brains. And then that's it. This is all the information you're going to find in the text. Like the green uh, part is the old information you're going to find in the text. And then from there, we're going to create the new information that is, I have a brain. If you notice, this logically follows from the previous. Now, this is a classical inference, okay, like a real classical inf inference, like a deduction. Uh, we're not always going to deal with this in the TOEFL. The TOEFL is going to be a little bit more of a free inference. So instead of doing this very logical, very clear inference, we may be dealing with an inference that looked more like this. I'm going to put the floor is wet. That's it. And I may have the information in another piece of the passage. So I have some, some, some information and it say it rained. It rained last night. Now, I have those two pieces of information, information that the floor is wet and the information that, the, that it rained last night. Now, nowhere in the text, it says that the floor is wet because it rained. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to join these two pieces of information and I'm going to create a new piece of information that is the fact that the floor is wet because it rained, which means the floor is wet with rain. And now I just created a new piece of information from the old uh, information that the text was providing. Don't worry too much about this. We're going to see this in the practice when we practice the, with real passages. Now, 
what we don't want to do, we don't want to treat as a factual question, okay? We definitely don't want to treat as a factual question, which means don't expect the answer to be in the text. Don't expect to read specifically the same words or the same information or uh, a variation or a combination of those words in the text. We are creating new information. Do not be unspecific. Again, here, for example, in my example, I say the floor is wet and they say it rains, so the floor is wet because it rains. So you don't want to say something like, yes, yeah, the floor is wet because of water, because it's, it's wet with water, right? Like, and that will be to be unspecific. And you don't want to try to understand everything you read. I don't know if you noticed, but I pretty much uh, always put this one because it's important that you don't try to understand. We're going to see how we can get the inferences, just uh, playing with the alternatives and not trying to understand the whole passage or the whole paragraph. Okay. Things we have to keep in mind when dealing with an inference question, remember that the answer is not in the text, unlike the factual question, okay? Remember that the answer does come from the text, so remember the principle of not bringing outside information, so you, we do not create inferences from information we have in our brains, we create inferences from the information that text is providing us, okay? So remember, the answer has to come from the text, okay? It's not in the text, but it comes from the text. And the third thing, remember that the answer does not go far from the information in the text. Why is this uh, important, uh, especially what does it mean? For example, here I have that it rained and I have that the floor is wet. Again, nowhere in the text I'm saying that it's rain, uh, that the rain caused the floor to be wet or that the floor is wet because of the rain. It, there can be another alternative. There are many alternatives for a floor to be wet. But let's say, uh, saying that it was the rain, is closer to the text because I'm using the information in the text. Now, it could also be the fact that somebody spilled water or the fact that a lot of people just peed on the floor. Yes, those are all possibilities, yes, but they're farther from the text than the fact that it rained. So you always wanna don't go far, okay? You wanna keep it as close to the text as possible. This is very important, okay? Now we're going to go to practice. I'm going to give you again one minute. Remember, read the question, focus on the keywords and scan the text to find what it says about the keywords. OK, I'm going to give you one full minute. Go. Okay, that's one minute. I hope you have an answer. We're going to check uh, the strategy and the answers one by one. Okay, so applying this strategy, what we do, we go to the keyword. Remember, is what does the author suggest about American bison? So we go to the text and look for American bison. So we go and we just found American bison right here. So what does the author say about American bison? We we read. We first scan in order to find a keyword, and after we found the keyword, we read what it says. So it says, the American bison is spread through all the open grasslands of North America, but in the southern part of the continent, there are deserts, so the bison could not spread there. And now we're going to focus on two, two important facts. The facts of that, uh, the fact that the American bison uh, did spread throughout the open grasslands, and then the fact that it could not spread there, and by there, I mean deserts, right? So now I have two important pieces of information. One, the American bison spread through all grasslands, and two, the American bisons did not spread throughout deserts. Now, I'm going to try to predict, okay? What information can I predict? Now, this should take you like five seconds. This should be automatic. So if it's taking you longer, then just don't predict. But ideally, we will predict. We will create the prediction of the inference just from this information. So what I can quickly predict just by looking at this is like, okay, 
that American bisons uh, can live in grasslands and cannot live in deserts. Like when there are no grasslands and where probably there is no water, they do not live there. That's it. Now, as you notice, this is, I'm not making such a big uh, inference. I'm not making such a big um, prediction, right? I'm not predicting something completely different from what it says. I'm pretty much taking what it says and I'm just switching it a little bit and, and to complete it in a little bit, okay? Now I'm gonna go analyzing uh, one by one, the alternatives one by one. So we go to letter A. They spread to North America from South America, right? And then we go to the part of the text where it talks about North America and South America. And it actually says that it could not spread in South America. It's not even saying anything about the direction in which it's going, but it's definitely saying that it's not spreading through South America. So this will be incorrect because it will be against what the topic, uh, what the text is saying. Now we're gonna go and look for the second alternative. A body of water stopped them from spreading south. But if we go to the text and see what is the thing that is stopped them from spreading south, it's not just not a body of water, but it's actually a desert, which is the completely opposite. So it will be, again, a contradiction is the opposite direction. Remember, always keep in mind your po, your process of elimination, like the reasons why an alternative is wrong. You're gonna apply this through all, all the question types in the, in the reading section. Okay. Now I have, they require open grasslands to survive. And here we have that they do um, spread through our open grasslands. Now, this thing alone, I mean, the highlighted in the text throughout the open grasslands alone does not provide enough evidence of uh, for C. This just means that they can live in grasslands, but they do not, they do not, oh, sorry. This does not imply that they require open grasslands. Just the fact that we can, you know, we can eat uh, ice cream every day, but that doesn't mean that we require ice cream to live. Now, if we say we, uh, or I eat ice cream every day, and if I stop eat, eating ice cream, I get sick. Okay, then I can infer that I require the ice cream. So I need the, contra the opposite information, right? I need the negative information of what happens if I stop eating ice cream. The same thing here. If I just say that they can spread through all the open grasslands, doesn't mean that they require it. It means just that, yeah, that, that's cool. That, yeah, open grasslands are cool. But then we have the, ne the negative information. We have that when there are deserts, meaning no grasslands, it cannot spread. The, like they, the bisons cannot spread. So now we know that they require, okay? And this is correct. Again, not just because they live through the open grasslands, but because they did not go th uh, through the places in which there are no open grasslands. Again, okay, and finally, we're gonna see uh, the last alternative. They originally lived in deserts. And actually there are two words here, originally and living in deserts. So actually they do not live in deserts because in the places in which there are deserts, it cannot spread. So actually it's contradictory information. And yeah, we're never really talking about originally where they originally came from, right? We don't even know if they came from the open grasslands. All we know is that they spread through the open grasslands. It nowhere in the text, it talks about, well, at least nowhere in this specific passage, it talks about where they came from originally. Okay, so be very careful. Now, why am I highlighting this? Because usually uh, there's more than one reason why an alternative is wrong. For example, if you notice the first one that we saw here, okay, yes, the direction is wrong because they never went to South America, you know, but also we don't know, right? We don't know if it goes from North America to South America. Again, in this case, it's completely wrong because they just never touched South America, right? They never went to South America. But we, we're not even talking about the direction in which they're spreading, okay? So there's sometimes more than one reason why a, an alternative is wrong. Okay, homework. Again, we're using the Thompson book here too. You're going to do exercise 3.1 and exercise 3.2. I'm going to show you what this looks like. So exercise 3.1, okay, looks like this. You have one sentence, you know, one piece of text, and then you have to infer uh, some information from this, and you have three alternatives. So you, all you have to do, you're going to choose one of these three alternatives to make an inference. Remember, when you're doing this, try to find what is wrong with the other ones. Don't just 
find the correct uh, inference, also try to find why the other ones are wrong. This is a very good exercise you should do for all your question types, but in the inference section is especially important because there are a lot of mistakes of inference because you go too far, because you kind of go too general, um, because you are not realizing that you're getting the opposite information, or sometimes you just don't know the reason why. You just mark something because it sounds right, but you don't really know why. So it's important that you practice finding the mistakes. Okay. Also, there will be a K at time in the exam, probably, where you don't know how to infer. So if you don't know how to infer, you don't want to waste time trying to predict your inference. What you want to do is you want to start eliminating the wrong answers. So you're going to do this and you're going to do all of this. And then you're going to do 3.2, which is here in which you have a passage. And now you have multiple choice, you know, question and four choices for alternatives. Okay. That will be it. I hope it was helpful for you. Remember to do your homework, to practice. Remember, theory is nothing without practice. Uh, this is what my website, if you want to visit it, remember to like, subscribe, uh, check out the other videos. I'm making a full list on uh, question types in the TOEFL reading section. I'm also going to be uh, making at least one video per other section, but the only section in which I'm dwelling a lot is in the TOEFL reading section because it's, it's really low. Okay, so that's it. I hope you like it and let's check the next uh, question type. Bye.